The live trade inherently has animal welfare problems, long distance transportation by sea has inherent risks that can never be overcome, you know there's been major disasters that have resulted from mechanical breakdowns and fires and trade disputes but on every single shipment, especially sheep, animals will suffer and die from failing to eat and uh, things like salmonellosis so, and this has been going on for three decades, it's never been resolved so, and that's in addition to just the stresses of transportation by sea. You add on to that that animals are being supplied to countries where there are no laws to protect them from cruelty and you know for the last eight years I've been witnessing how those animals are treated in importing countries which just makes this trade unethical in every every area and when it comes to Australia being involved we should never have been world leaders in uh, really one of the cruelest trades the world has ever known. The key concerns with the live trade are, are essentially one that animals are exposed to quite a lot of additional stresses at the end of their life. These occur partly because there's a lot of transport involved, different forms of transport, right from when the animals are mustered in the paddocks uh, through to when they arrive in a feedlot overseas. And the additional stresses will be not just the transport itself and things like motion sickness that the animals might experience on the ships, but also the environment that they're exposed to. You know, things like high levels of ammonia in the ships, uh, and then we get right through to the slaughter process, which very often is not conducted uh, in a way which Australian, most Australians would like to see. The AMIU has held concerns about the live export trade for, well, since its inception, approximately 40 years ago. Now, we maintain that it has been a very substantial factor behind abattoir closures and job losses in the Australian meat processing industry. The sheep trade on the long hauls needs to cease, without a doubt, because there's unpreventable disease that uh, can't be dealt with, can't be addressed properly, and uh, I think it's wrong for the Secretary of Department of Agriculture, for Fisheries and Forestry to be signing off on risk assessments, namely the Consignment Risk Management Plan. Uh, when the risks aren't adequately addressed. I think the key issue here is, is transparency. It's getting the message out so that your average Australian in the street can understand what really happens. At the moment, we lack a system where uh, we have clear monitoring, clear surveillance, uh, which is independent and is going to pass the credibility test at various stages of the live export trade. 80% of Australian consumers do not want uh, Australian livestock to be sent on live export, uh, providing that the jobs can be maintained um, and are not all lost to the industry, and that's a given anyway, um, and providing that um, uh, the animals can be safely uh, killed here in Australia and uh, to high welfare standards. The health and welfare of animals on board ship is solely dependent in terms of transparency and feedback on the reporting of the veterinarian for those long haul journeys. Now, the worry about that is these Aquis accredited veterinarians who are doing the inspection on behalf of Aquis are unfortunately not independent. Now, in no way am I impugning their integrity, but what I am saying is there's a perceived conflict of interest. They are chosen by the exporters they are paid by the exporters and they may not be re-engaged by that exporter if they don't like their ports. Well the right time to end the live trade would have been that it shouldn't have ever commenced. The fact that it's been going for 30 years and 160 million animals have been victims of it is just unforgivable really. You know, but the evidence from the last 12 months, the horrendous footage from Kuwait which has been going on there for literally decades and now we've got Indonesia and, and some 7 million cattle have been supplied to the most horrendous treatment. What is clear is that the live export trade cannot be trusted. They will supply animals to the cruelest of treatment. It's not an industry worthy of government support and it certainly doesn't have the support of the public. The world population is growing very rapidly. We're looking at a population of at least 9 billion by 2050. Um, if FAO estimates are correct, we're looking at 15 billion uh, by the end of the century. We are not going to effectively feed that population. Um, just with, uh, with beef cattle which are being produced in the north of Australia. We have some very significant opportunities here in Australia to use some of our prime land in the north which has got water, it's got sun uh, and it will and can have the infrastructure 
um, to develop its um, production of, of vegetables, of cereals, um, of a whole range of products which will more efficiently utilise uh, that prime land than extensive rearing of beef cattle. The live trade uh, industry has a poor record over many years of multiple welfare infringements, which shows that it's not a perfect system. Okay? Now, I'm certainly not advocating that we necessarily need an instant um, cessation of trade, but what we do need is an instant review of what has gone wrong and to stop the systemic breakdown in processes. Um, once we've got that in control, once we've got the information, we can understand how to fix the system systematically, piece by piece. And there are multiple parts to this trade, so it's not as if it's as easy as saying, aha, there's one little spot that we need to fix. Um, we need to take a holistic view over that, make sure we understand it, and start to implement the changes immediately. Some of those are what I'd call low-hanging fruit. They can be done relatively easily, just through honest reporting, minor changes, and being cognizant of feedback which has been in the system. And that feedback, in my opinion, has often not been taken at its value, has been resisted and not been fully utilized. So what do we do about the live export industry in the future? Um, I think we need to continue with research and to find out what it means to the animal. We've hardly dipped our toe into that particular issue yet. Um, and the live, livestock industry needs to be very open there. It's no good employing tame researchers to produce the answers you want. Let's get the independent scientists to try and find out what the right answers are for animals. We understand the value of RSPCA in the community. We understand the social license that we operate with. For any sustainable, profitable industry, cares about its animals, we, we, we just have to work together. There is, a, there is no other option. Clearly, economics is the main problem, um, but what the government has never done is actually look at active ways of moving from live animal exports to a box meat only trade and really I mean the RSPCA has been calling for that for about 30 years. We've done our own economic assessments and the government needs to do that too. Meat and Livestock Australia need to do that and actually be active partners in shifting from live exports to a meat only trade. It is always the economic arguments that are marshalled up by the supporters of the trade in order to keep it going. So it's always a substantial barrier. Regrettably, in our opinion, in the opinion of the AMIEU, these arguments have never ever been analysed or they've never been subjected to any real rigorous scrutiny. Look, I think it's pretty important that we have a reliable, well-funded, independent arbiter of, of what we do as an industry. And by that I mean the Australian Quarantine Inspection Service, so the vets that supervise the, the, the transport part of live export. It's important that, that there's, there's integrity and there's transparency in that process. Um, if things are going wrong, we need to be able to make them better. So we, we, don't, we don't ask that the government keeps reducing, reducing funds for acres. They've been cutting, cutting acres funds the whole time. They've cut it from the meat processing industry as well, and now they're, and they're cutting it from all areas. So we would ask that the government takes this, their responsibility seriously and continues to fund their organisations like ACLIS and the vets. I think unfortunately there could be a lot more proactivity from the um, livestock exporters themselves. Um, I don't see a lot of receptivity to the feedback that is coming in there. Um, I also see a lack um, from Aquas where um, some of that feedback could be more actively and proactively put into the system. I see a wealth of veterinary resource which is there, but we do need to make sure that that is independent, that those veterinarians are able to give their opinions without being in a position of perceived conflict of interest. In terms of long-term security of the trade, um, provision of the right quality of product to the right type of consumer, it is the, in the industry's best interest to develop a high quality um, trade in box beef. The responsibility rests firmly and squarely with the live export um, industry uh, and with bodies such as Aquas to make sure that they're getting accurate information out to the Australian public so that the taxpayer can actually make the decision. I think there are many who may find this industry distasteful. There are many who think this industry is essential for jobs. There's a spectrum of opinion, but I think 
In a country with an elected government, everybody has a right to that opinion and they should be given the information, the opportunity to express that opinion. The proposed new framework for um, ensuring the welfare of animals that are exported um, currently only applies to Indonesia. And the major problem with that framework is that it doesn't mandate stunning of animals prior to slaughter. Now, if all animals are stunned, most of the um, cruelty and the welfare problems that were shown um, by the Animals Australia investigation would not occur. It's the single most effective way of improving welfare. Um, it's also accepted by the Muslim community in Indonesia, so it is extremely disappointing that the government hasn't made that part of the new framework. I've been engaging in this debate for quite some time now. I must acknowledge there are contrary arguments, and those contrary arguments are, are often quite well put um, by those interest groups. But I cannot say that I have ever encountered an argument that presents an impossibility to the end of the live export trade. There certainly are some challenges, but I remain completely convinced we can work through all of them. I sincerely believe that if we can provide a forum for the live export uh, workers and the, most importantly, the livestock producers, because they hold the key, they nurture those animals throughout their life on the properties, and they don't want to see them horrifically slaughtered or even put on ships where they may be suffering extreme stress. So let's empower those producers to sort these problems out. Now, the government does have a forum to get people together, the Live Export Standards Advisory Group, um, but it rarely meets. It hasn't met for the last nine months or so throughout the whole of the Indonesian crisis. Let's see that group actually meeting on a regular basis um, to get the advocacy groups together with the exporters uh, and the, um, uh, the producers and sort out the problems. Part of our frustration as animal advocates is that the government for too long has been listening to no one but the industry. You know, we are the only ones that have independently gone to these countries and documented the treatment of animals. The government should have done this long ago. They haven't taken appropriate oversight of the industry. On so many occasions I've stood in abattoirs and thought if there was a single politician there with me, they would have put up their hand to end the live trade. So, no longer can this trade be considered out of sight of the politicians. We've put it under their nose this year. They're now responsible. They know that the public wants it to end. And, and really, the live trade will end. It's only a matter of when. And, and we're deeply disappointed that the Gillard government hasn't chosen to be the, the government that will be remembered and revered as the, as the government that ends the live trade. Whoever ends it in the future is going to be remembered for all of the right reasons. These current governments will be remembered as supporting this cruel trade. We've all got a, a common interest, we've got a, an economic and animal welfare interest and we, we all just have to work together, it's that simple. Change must be in the wind, people want change, people are now asking for more information, it's up to the government to start to deliver that information. The government after all is elected, the government has a responsibility to us as Australians, as taxpayers, to start to deliver that information. Once we have that information, It'll be a spectrum. Some people may want the trade to remain a while, some people may want it to go instantly. And I suspect once the information is out there, in that spectrum, as always, we'll come up with a quorum opinion which will dictate, finally, how it is managed. The AMIU will continue its argument against the live export trade. It has been mounting this argument for well over three decades now. We do believe that significant inroads have been made into some of the key claims of this trade. We will persist. We urge all those out there with animal welfare concerns, with concerns for Australian jobs, with economic concerns generally, to continue mounting the argument, secure in the knowledge that on occasions there is nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And we see a gathering momentum of the like that we have never seen before. There's no doubt that the live trade will end. It's just a matter of when. You know, our politicians are now keenly aware of the degree of public opposition of the trade. We have numerous MPs on both, um, but from both major parties who now oppose the live trade. So unfortunately, it will probably take another incident and, and further suffering. It shouldn't have taken that, but the voice of the Australian community is being heard, and that's the important thing to keep going in coming months for as long as it takes basically because the live trade will end and it will be as a result of the Australian public caring about the welfare of animals in this country.